Hello everybody, welcome back to ABA with Dr. D. This is Dr. D, a real pleasure to have everybody back today. And today we're gonna be covering total task chaining. Total task chaining is one of the three chaining procedures that we commonly use in the field of behavior analysis. Uh, uh, the other two consist of forward chaining, backward chaining, and once again, they're very, very common in our field. We utilize these particular chaining procedures to teach self-help skills primarily, okay? Um, I wanted to uh, focus on providing some definitions here first of what total task chaining or presentation this particular definition is. And I got this particular uh, definition from this great book here from Training Manuals uh, for Behavior Technicians Working with Individuals with Autism, a phenomenal book by Tarbucks and Tarbucks. So what Tarbucks and Tarbucks uh, define total task presentation is that they said it involves presenting the entire task to the learner and having her complete all the steps onto the chain is learned. For example, you would deliver the instruction, wash your hands and watch the learner what the learner does. You allow her to complete the chain of behavior independently until she makes an error or does not respond, at which point you prompt to complete the correct step correctly and then stop prompting and watch what she does next. Okay, once again, Tarbucks and Tarbucks, phenomenal book. Okay, also, when do we deliver reinforcement? Well, reinforcement is delivered after completing the final step in the chain. Now, the whole aspect that comes afterwards is the mastery. Okay, mastery is achieved when all the steps within the chain can be independently performed to criterion. Now, criterion is going to be very much dependent on your individual client. Each client, each student that you work with will have their very specific criteria that you as a clinician will, to, will need to determine what's best for them. Some of the criteria co can consist of the accuracy, how accurate they or how much percentage, how well can they do the steps. Another one would be uh, time. How quick can they be able to do the steps? So to me, specifically as a clinician, I used to love working with both the, uh, the accuracy and the time, okay? And we'll talk a little bit more about why that's important. But once again, criterion is part of, I understand the criterion is very crucial for the total test chain, okay? And for all the chaining procedures as, uh, as it is, okay? Uh, total task chaining is referred to as total task presentation, concurrent chaining, or whole task presentation. So it's a variety of ways in which it's, being, it's called in our field, okay? So research uh, with regards to total task chaining, compare the effects of full, uh, forward chaining with total task chaining to see which one was more effective. In the McDonald and McFarland 1988 uh, study, they compared the use of forward chaining and total task chaining to teach individuals with developmental disabilities how to use a hand washing machine and laundry soap dispenser. And the results show that skill acquisition was more efficient when using total task chaining than forward chaining for all four participants. Spurner et al. 1983 found the rates of acquisition and accuracy to be greater with total task chaining than with backward chaining. And Spurner, once again, 1984 found that total task chaining resulted in greater rates of learn learning across all participants, providing additional evidence to support these findings. When comparing training time, Spooner et al. found that total task chaining required additional time, but also resulted in the greater amount of behavior change per unit of time. For similar reasons, Martin et al. 1981 suggests that total task chaining is superior to backward chaining. Now, I want to emphasize that every client, every student that you have will require their own individualized treatment plan or their own individualized, um, you know, chaining procedures in this case. OK, so just because these results tell you these things, it's very important to understand that each child you work with, each student you work with will require their own spe specific, um, you know, teaching methods so that we can be able to best assist them okay, and learn these skills okay now some advantages to consider when you're utilizing total task chaining that we were able to find is that first of all it allows the completion of tasks that must be completed daily such as brushing teeth it increases efficiency in instructional time it increases learner opportunities to practice all the steps total tasks may be easier to implement in a natural setting total tasks may result in faster acquisition rates as learners not limited to learning one step at a time says it all 2017. So these are some advantages, once again, to consider as you're making that decision whether total task could be the right type of procedure or method you want to use with your client. Now, disadvantages. So some errors are more likely to occur when you're using a total task. Also, the process could become aversive and punishing for the learner, okay, because they're making mistakes. And once again, that could be something, a factor to consider when selecting the right chaining procedure. So for some clients, it might be better to select the backward chaining procedure or forward chaining procedure. At the end of the day, you as a clinician need to determine what's best 
for your client based, based on your assessment uh, processes. Okay. Now, how do clinicians come up with these total uh, these chain uh, task analysis, or in this case, the total task uh, chaining? Uh, number one is they, they mentioned that we need to observe a competent performer, someone that's really good at doing these things. Okay. The next one is consulting with an expert, someone that's really good and, and can explain to you step by step of what the process is. And also, you know, trying out the sequence yourself. Now, I do want to add a really important one, which is basically consulting with caregivers or family members around there that actually interact with the client on a daily basis. Because, for example, like if they during when they rinse after brushing teeth, they use their hands versus using a cup. That right, there's already a difference. And if you, for example, are used to using a cup and you go to work with the client that uses the opposite of using their, their hand, then that's where you're going to notice some differences. Okay, and that's where you can have issues with the lack of maintenance long term because the family does not, you know, reinforce that. They do the completely opposite. Cultural considerations is also really important. In this particular channel, we talk a lot about cultural uh, competence and also understanding how we need to integrate our families in that process. And this is a really, really great opportunity to do that when you're creating these task analysis. Okay. Here's an example of what a, t a task analysis data sheet looks like. Okay, so at the top, it mentions the skill that we're targeting, which is the brushing teeth. Okay, the objective for this particular student is we want the student to complete the brushing teeth routine with 100% accuracy across three consecutive sessions. The type of chaining procedures are mentioned here. So we have total tasks, forward and backward chaining. Here, they identify total tasks as a the procedure they're using. Okay, for data collection, they utilize I for independent. In this particular data sheet, you're gonna see pluses instead of I's. Okay, so they mean the same thing. V for verbal prompt, G for gestural, uh, P for partial, PP for partial physical, FP for full physical, and R for refusal. Okay, so once again, it is very important to know that your client will need a variety of prompts. Very important to figure out which kind of um, prompt hierarchy do you wanna go with. Do you wanna do a least to most, most to least, gestural prompts, Phys whatever it is that the prompt you're going to be implementing, you want to make sure you specify that here in your task analysis, you can be able to provide that training that you can be able to, um, you know, make sure that we're all consistently implementing the same thing. Okay. Now here in this particular uh, data sheet, you see the date in which this uh, uh, was conducted. You see initials. Uh, one thing that I see that's missing here is the SD, which I'll talk about the SD, which is the instruction of that needs to be delivered before we cue the individual to start engaging in the behavior in this case brushing teeth okay so very important to add that as part of your of your uh uh your data sheet right nowadays we do a lot of digital like you know data sheets so you can literally now people just literally plug it into their into the ipads or whatever they're using they can see the information there okay this was old school basically this was way back i don't know how long ago this data sheet is from but this is a very long time ago okay but what you see here is that, you know, we have the steps once again, broken down. Okay. One through 15. And here we see the different types of, once again, data collection that's going on. These, a lot of, they use the verbal gestural and the score, which is nine out of 15. Okay. So what to a 60%. Okay. So, um, a good way to assess if a chaining procedure is the right one for your client is to evaluate the progress, right? If your client is not really making progress, then that means you probably need to make an adjustment to your task analysis or to the chaining procedure. Okay. In this particular example, we see that the client did make progress. Okay. So we see that they're up in the eighties as the, as the last couple of data points reported, even to a 90 here at the end. Okay. So this once again is an example where the total task chain procedure did work for this client. Now at the bottom, there's duration to complete duration to complete. Once again, to me is very important because I'll give an example. Let's say that you're doing brushing teeth, but the student is take is getting 100% accuracy, right? But they're taking 30 minutes or 15 minutes. To me, that's a very long time to brush your teeth, which is why a lot of parents actually may be discouraged and might actually want to go in there and start helping the, their, their, their kids out to complete the steps. So it's very important to also track and also focus on the fluency part, which means how quick they're able to do something. Okay, so to me, once again, duration is a key part. You might want to focus first on the accuracy and later on that could be your next objective which is duration how quick can the individual perform it once again your goals of duration as, a, as well as uh, accuracy need to be based on the family's you know feedback they want to you want to see how long the dad or the mom are taking or the caregivers are taking to complete these tasks and then after that you're going to come up with the right objective for them 
Okay, so once again, this right here is an example of a data sheet that utilizes total task chaining and how it would look and also for you to determine the best, you know, basically to analyze your data as you go across the different steps. The next thing that we're going to do, is we're going to watch a video together. Okay, we're going to watch a video, one of the videos we have in our channel, which is a, uh, the total task chaining, um, you know, a video, very popular video and uh, a video that you can watch without this commentary. You can just watch it by, uh, by itself. Okay, so let's go ahead and watch that video right now. Total task chaining, brushing teeth. Here we go. All right, my friend, are you ready? Yes. Okay, let's brush teeth. Okay, so let me pause it there. So one of the things that you notice here that the practitioner uh, provided was instruction, let's brush teeth, okay? And that is very crucial. Once again, I mentioned earlier in the slides where you wanna make sure you have a very specific instruction. We also call it an SD when you're delivering, uh, when you're starting any program. So that's basically the cue for the student to start, okay? Okay, another thing to note is the fact that you notice that the student here, um, you know, grab their uh, toothbrush and toothpaste from underneath the cabinet. And that right there already, you know, kind of emphasizes the fact that some of our kids are gonna have a variety of ways or, or locations where they're gonna have these items available, you know, for them. So some of our kids could have their toothbrush and, and, and toothpaste uh, right there, like literally by the sink. Uh, some of them around another area in the bathroom. So that's why it's so crucial that you're adding that as part of your task analysis when you're putting it together, okay? Once again, very much dependent on what the family prefers. Nice job. All right. Okay. So up to this point, once again, uh, when the student grabbed or got their toothbrush and toothpaste, that right there will be considered independent responses. So it'll be or for us would be pluses there. And then that's where you notice that the student kind of paused and did not continue responding. So this is where you notice that the practitioner is coming in now to start providing some support. Okay, that right, there's a hand over hand prompt. Okay, you notice a lot of the hand over hand prompt going on there. Okay, looks like that toothpaste is a little bit hard to get off. All right, there we go. Okay. Okay, student practitioner are providing the full hand over hand, even some facial. <laughs> some people may consider the, the, the gesture, right? Um, okay. So some, you might hear some verbal prompts coming soon. Good job. There you go. And also praise. And that's okay. You can deliver some praise. Okay. Okay. That's fine. It's a moderate, small praise. Doesn't hurt. That's fine. You do want to save the big, you know, like amount of praise at the end of the whole process. Okay. Very good. See the practitioner keeps going. Okay. Another verbal. Okay. See that hand over hand. Just roll, okay. He's sitting out a little bit there, task reduction. Okay, and the student here is using their hands to, you know, rinse, and that's fine. That's okay, you know, in certain families, that's what they do. That's that's what we're gonna, that's what we're gonna do. Good job, we're all done. Yeah, and that's basically, that's, that's once again, uh, emphasizing that, that's okay. We use our hands, we don't have to use a cup. If that's what the family does, that's, that's okay. Um, that's why, you know, us as behavior technicians, behavior analysts, people that are working in our field, we need to stop being so rigid. We need to understand that we need to adjust and adapt the program, the whatever way that we're going to teach them, you know, to the family. Because at the end of the day, the families are going to be the ones that are going to, you know, be maintaining these skills. We did talk a lot about this in our other lectures. If you haven't checked them out, you should check out the diversity and behavior analysis series we got going on. We talk a lot about that, the fact that we do need to do a lot better job in understanding the family dynamics and also the whole aspect of cultural competence, which would allow us to be a lot better clinicians. Okay. 
So that's basically, basically all I have for you for total task training. Once again, just trying to put it all together, PC in the, the didactic portion and providing more information about what total task training is. Now adding a commentary to this particular video. And I hope this can help you have, you know, once again, a really nice introduction. If you're doing introduction to task analysis or a refresher with your, with your staff, uh, you can also do this, use this for parent training. Um, so yeah, there's a variety of videos that we're going to continue doing these kind of like, you know, uh, model to be able to provide more information. And if you haven't checked out, once again, our other videos, we have a lot of content. Once again, content that is relevant to how to, how to run discrete trials, um, how to prompt. We have videos on diversity. We're just, we're just beefing up our library of variety of, of different topics here, and we're going to continue doing so. So if you haven't subscribed yet, I would highly suggest for you to do so because we have a lot of cool th things coming along. And if you already subscribe, I really appreciate the love and the support. We also will be doing raffles very soon with our community to make sure that we're able to reward our people that are, you know, constantly there supporting us that are, that are part of the, of the community. So thank you so much, everybody. You all have a good rest of your day. Take care now.